So welcome back everybody. This is Night Flight and today Jason Christoph is back and we will see if the two of us are able to stick to our <laughs> topic of the day. <laughs> to our topic of the day. Last time uh, it yeah we derailed. It can happen and <laughs> but uh, today we are going to talk about the pharaohs that they actually never really left and um what evidence we have for that. So, Jason, welcome. Well, thank you for having me back. Now, I've I've done over 200 interviews and I've written over 3,000 articles and my main, like my living, how I make a living is educating people on brainwashing, mind control and psychological manipulation. But when you're in this field, you become a like sort of a pattern recognition expert. So I'm not claiming to be an expert in Egyptology at all. And what we're going to do today is almost like open a box, like a puzzle box, and throw all these puzzle pieces down. And hopefully someone else can start putting the puzzle together, at least getting the corner pieces. Because a lot of what I see when I'm doing my research Somehow my brain, and I think it's more the natural brain. I think everybody's brain is like this. I quit. Uh, I found myself doing drugs and hurting myself because I was under psychological manipulation or brainwashing or mind control. I discovered, I investigated that. I found out there's only sort of one way to mind control someone. And then I mind controlled myself out of all my drugs, all my alcohol, all my self-destructive poisons. And then my brain started remembering things and like connecting dots for me based on the information. It was like they would take one repetition of something that I saw and my brain would sort of put it up on a shelf. And then if I was reading something even three years later and I saw something very similar, the brain would say, do you remember that three years ago when you read that? And I was like, how did I just remember that? And what kept coming up it was all this stuff about pharaohs, ancient Egypt, and sort of what they were good at. And what they're good at was ruling people and corralling people and manipulating people. And they only have a couple tactics. And we'll get to those tactics eventually. So they're sort of experts at human farming. So... We, we know animal farmers, beef farmers, chicken farmers. They sort of looked at the world as, okay, why don't we apply the farming techniques to humans and farm them for profit accordingly? And they have some very unique and uh, very effective tactics for farming the humans. So let's just open this puzzle We'll dump some pieces on the floor. And the first thing, maybe, uh, Judith, maybe you could take some notes for what we should be putting in the show notes. Because people like, and this is the first time after 200 interviews, it's the first time I've ever had to make notes for <laughs> a talk, ever. Because usually people interview me on psychological ma manipulation and brainwashing, which of course I know like the back, you know, like the back of my hand, because it's all I do in my life. But today we want to really just give people very interesting information. And I guarantee people they'll start seeing a lot of what I talk everywhere they look. <laughs> okay. The, um, the first thing we'll talk about is a very interesting documentary called The Ring of Power. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, like a five hour documentary. And it's made by a lady named Grace Powers. And I know the power is twice there. This is this is how the title and producer are. Now, there's points in the documentary where this lady will come out and openly say that the UK royals are descendants of ancient Egyptian pharaohs. Mm -hmm. which is a big claim. And she doesn't waste any time going down a punch list. 
in this sort of punch list is part and parcel of all these other dots she'll connect for people. It's very educational. So she traces the scepter that Queen Elizabeth used to hold and Charles holds now. It's the exact same scepter as what Egyptian pharaohs used to hold. Now, of course, the scepter that the queen holds, it's not only Egyptian in origin, she's adorned her scepter with the largest cut diamond in the world, which is called the Star of Africa, which sort of, it's not, these are just evidence. This is not overwhelming evidence, because of course, Egypt's in Africa. And then Grace Powers will say, it was only the Egyptian pharaohs that used to celebrate jubilees. And we know the queen celebrates the silver and gold jubilee. And they're not exactly lined up. The pharaohs, the pharaonic kings and queens of Egypt, used to celebrate their jubilee on the 30th year of their rule. And the queen had her silver, which is the 25 year, and the gold, which is the 50 year. Now, when she was coronated, in 1952, she was coronated on a stepped pyramid. And a lot of people would just think it's just a whole bunch of steps. So she sits higher. Now, what's, you know, what's really interesting of the step pyramid is the step pyramids in Egypt are in a place called the land of the dead. And this, I don't expect anybody to be connecting the dots here, but I'm going to, you know, basically circle back to that land of the dead thing later, because I'll tell you outright without, you know, trying to keep you in mystery. The Egyptians are masters of raising the dead. And I'll fully explain what that means. This is not a fictitious thing. They are not raising the dead as in physical bodies. They are raising the dead in regards to their philosophy, their dark and inverted and evil philosophy for ruling the planet. These are concepts and ideas that we as humans killed long ago because they're so dark and evil, and they have a method to raise those philosophies again from the dead, even though we committed as human beings to put them to death in the living realm, like we live in the living realm. Bees, bees as a symbol are the ancient symbol of pharaonic royalty and the bees are always interwoven into the queen and king's gowns so we're gathering some evidence here about this connection between the pharaohs of old and the uk royals now i'm not too sure if people are aware have you ever seen the judges in the uk or mm -hmm. people with royal appointments and they have a very large wig mm -hmm that they wear, correct? This wig, and a lot of people will see the statues of the Egyptians or the leave and see like say King Tut, and he has this thing over his head. It's like, it's almost like perfectly rectangular around here. It's the same wigs. So we have the exact same wigs worn by Egyptian royalty and their, and their court as being worn today by royal, royally appointed executives and people related to the royal family, especially the judges. The judges will wear the uh, white wigs. So let me see what else we have. Now, the kilts. A lot of people will presume the kilt is from what geographical area? They'll say it's uh, Scottish. The kilt originated in Egypt. You, you, you can go to any sort of e Egyptian statue, you will usually see the white pharaonic power wig, which sort of the average person, it, there's not a lot of texture there, so it's sort of hard. And then you will, hard to identify, and then you'll see the kilt. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't really work on connecting the dots here. The Egyptians were famous as well for putting, people would assume this next thing I'm talking about is done by everybody, but it was 
originated with the Egyptians is they would stamp their coinage with the pharaoh of the day. And so this is how they would sort of mind control with repetition who is in power. And today we, we have the queen's image and they want to do a recurrency uh, where they want to take all the queen's images out now and put Charles on there. And you can see the royal family is obsessed with putting their face on their coinage and even on their stamps. And there was a special edition coin minted in the UK couple, maybe, I don't know, 10 or 15 years before the queen passed away. And on one side, of course, is the famous figure. Hi, Kitty. I can see you even in my peripheral vision. You can is her this well-known side shot of the queen's head. And then on the other side, we have the ring of power from the Lord of the Rings. And on the inscription, and I'll read it to you, and these things come in handy later when you try to, even when you're looking at what's going on today. One ring to rule them all, one ring to find them, one ring to bring them all, and in the darkness of their in ignorance, bind them. Now, mm -hmm. that is what's written on this ring. And a ring can be synonymous for a ring we wear on our finger, but almost a frequency as well, where I, I say to you, I'm going to ring Judith, which means I'm going to summon Judith. I'm going to use the frequency or vibration of my cell phone to vibrate the air that activates the cell phone tower. That's going to send out a stronger vibration. So this ring concept, one ring to rule them all, could also be interpreted as one vibration or one frequency to rule them all. And if people go to the documentary, put this on your list, Judith, there's a documentary called Blue Truth. Blue. It is a blue as in, yeah, B-L-U-E, Truth, T-R-U-T-H. And it's a Spanish documentary by medical doctors and scientists here in Mexico that just did confirm that people who took this, uh, where's this going, by the way, Judith? So I know uh, what to say YouTube. next. You mean the Jamba Juice? Uh, yeah. The so people we'll who had the Jamba Juice. <laughs> Yeah, we'll say the people that had the juice were guaranteed to be emitting the Bluetooth signal. And it was a what's called a MAC address, which means mobile access control. It has nothing to do with Apple. It is not the Mac Apple concept. It is a open computer software concept, which means if there's a MAC address being emitted from something, it means I can gather information coming from that object, but I also can communicate with that object as well. So Blue Truth will definitely show people that there might be one ring, one frequency, one vibration, one signal, one Wi-Fi signal to rule them all. Now, pharaohs were also buried in tombs uh, in and around pyramids and the royals the uk royals are buried under westminster abbey which is adorned at the very apex by what would you think what would be the apex of westminster abbey it is a pyramid right at the right at the center so also with the pharaohs throughout history they were known to engage in incest because they wanted all the power and all the money. And to them, money was energy. It was not what we're taught it is. It was the energy of the slave class in physical form. And that energy could be wielded like a sorcerer wields a ball of energy to create many things, including raising the dead. And we'll get to that. I know it's a fantastical phrase. I'm not using it lightly. I'll explain that at the end of this talk. So the UK royals, if you look, are also famous for their acts of incest. And so you can see there are definitely a lot of 
similarities, which has gone over. I'm just doing a brief summation of what everybody can find for themselves in the documentary, The Ring of Power by Grace Powers. This is very and very interesting information. Again, these are just puzzle pieces. We can move them around, try to fit them together. Maybe someone in the future will maybe put them together faster. There is a building in downtown London, and it's the shape of a pyramid, a glass pyramid. Does anybody know that one? It's called the Shard Building. Mm -hmm. And there and are in Paris, we have also a glass pyramid at the L L Louvre, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, and there's, I mean, and I'm not going to jump ahead, but the the buildings on the day after September the 10th, when they were removed, the building that replaced them was a, a pyramid structure. And there are other things we'll talk about in regards to that day. Now, the thing about the height, the numerology was very, a very deep area of study for the Egyptians. They were, they were obsessed with numbers. And in their code of numbers, there was you had to synthesize all the numbers you're looking at into a single number. So 72 is not 72. It is seven plus two, which equals nine. And there's your number. There's your one number to work with. Now, the Shard building has 72 floors mm. and it's 801 feet. So we have two nines there. Now, the reason the Egyptians were obsessed with nines it's because nine has this very particular aspect to it that the average person doesn't understand. So if I tell you right now, Judith, what's nine times three? It's 27 and two plus seven is nine. A bit. Right. And that, that is always the case with nine. Uh, if you multiply and if you... Uh, Anything. Addition and yeah, yeah, yeah. Even if you started... Nine times nine times nine times nine times nine. Mm -hmm. When you get to the number and you add up all the other numbers, like nine times six, uh, I think it's 54. Five plus four is nine. Nine times nine is 81. Eight plus one is nine. And this sort of code is used as a code sort of communication for the average person can see that the beginnings are different but the end is the same. So they like to use things in increments of nine because a nine based system is something that looks different to the what's called the uninitiated eye, but it will always crank out the exact same end product. Mm -hmm. So all our political systems are nine based systems. It doesn't matter if you vote for the Tories or the liberals or the Democrats or the Republicans. It looks different, right? But you end with the same effect. And it doesn't matter if you chair for Manchester United or Manchester City, your, you know, your, your arse is still in the seats. You're still polluting yourself with hot dogs and beer. You're not investigating. You're not involved in your own life. The result, the slave-based result is the same. The sports systems are nine-based systems. Uh, the political systems are nine-based systems. Doesn't matter if you drink Coke or Pepsi. It doesn't matter if you have Marlboro or Camel cigarettes, you're still gonna get sick. And this is why, you know, not only is there a glass pyramid in the middle of downtown London, we see that the architecture is sort of tipping of the hat to the ancient Egyptians obsession with ha, we look different, right? We're just as the royals, but in the end, you're still getting ruled or we're dressed as you know, the, the, the queen of the Netherlands, but you're still getting ruled. This is an old, old Egyptian trick. Let's move on to say 9-11. And I know that might bring some of the sensors here right now. So what can we call that so that we don't repeat it too many times? I'm not too sure what we can, we'll say the big date in September. How about that? Mm -hmm. 
So the big date in September, a lot of people aren't aware. Guess what the ancient Egyptian New Year's is? The yeah. big date in September. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So why would something like this be orchestrated on the bit, you know, on the Egyptian New Year? And if we're going to talk about the Pentagon in Washington, D.C., and guess what day the first shovel ceremony was back in somewhere in the 60s? It was the big day in September. And so again, there's a bit of, you know, you're like, there's a lot of, uh, there's some, some Egyptian uh, aroma here, some mm -hmm. connections. Now we notice, and again, dot connecting. I remember on the big day, watching the buildings mm -hmm. go down and you're watching the aftermath. <clears throat> and I have these photos on my website at jchristoff.com. <clears throat> you'd have to go into the search bu uh, button and just search uh, the the word Egyptian or Egypt. But I was watching the smoke billow out <clears throat> and I noticed... Have a drink. Yeah, maybe I'll have a little bit of a drink. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> yeah, the spirits are after me on this one. I have to set a little bit of a spell on me. <clears throat> there we go. So I noticed as the smoke was billowing out, I'm like, well, that's funny. Is that the second, third, and fourth tallest building around the main site where the Armageddon was? There is a stepped pyramid. There is a regular pyramid building. So these are taller buildings. One ends with a step pyramid, which is also, that's the land of the dead. There's a regular pyramid on the top of a building. And then there's something called the Dome of Solomon. And someone says, well, that's not really dot connecting because the Solomon, it's called the Solomon building. That's Hebrew. And I'm like, hold on a second. Because Grace Powers in the documentary, The Ring of Power, she also starts connecting the he some people in the Hebrew community to the Egyptians. And it doesn't mean everybody in that community is connected. It just means, like Justin Trudeau is not a good man. I'm Canadian, he's Canadian. His actions have nothing to do with me. And if I, if I talk uh, badly about a mentally defective leader that happens to be Canadian, I don't blanket that talk to everybody else in the community. So we have to understand that there is, there is some connections between ancient Egypt and some things in the Hebrew community. I mean, in the sort of the Egyptians would consider that it was the queen, sort of the female genetic line that was the most important. And we also see that in the Hebrew community. Like if you, if I were to marry, if my daughter were to marry a Jewish man, <clears throat> she's not going to be part of the Jewish faith. She's not allowed. But if I, if I marry a Jewish woman, I believe I'm allowed. It's the female genetic line that gives me access to that religion. This is the same in the Pharaonic dy dynasties. So the queen's bloodline has been traced back to Abraham. And this is in the royal lineage DNA tracing, like the official documents that the queen's genetic line goes all the way back to Abraham which is sort of a Hebrew patriarch. And many people say that Abraham was a Pharaoh, Amenhotep the first. So you can see there's, there's starting to be a little bit of connection. The queen has something called the throne chair. Now underneath the throne chair, there's the stone of Jacob, sort of a, he, a Hebrew symbol. So why would the queen put the stone of Jacob beneath 
her throne chair. And again, this is trying to make a connection between sort of the Dome of Solomon that was left standing on 9-11. On and, you know, that is the Solomon Dome. This is a sort of Jewish or Hebrew symbol. And then we see a lot of Hebrew connections in the Royal, you know, in the UK Royal and how they act and a lot of their symbols. And again, if you go watch this documentary, you can trace back to the Pharaonic lines. Now, oddly enough, Jacob means the one who seizes, the one who usurps and the one who circumvents. And if anything, this small group of Egyptians are famous for is their manipulations. I said that the pharaonic lines had were human farmers. And to say that they usurp, seize, and circumvent would sort of be the understatement of the century. Now, if you have any questions or comments so far, you let me know, Judith. Why don't you, do you have any? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, I just didn't want to interrupt you. Um, so <clears throat> we also see a lot of symbols. Well, at least as you found out here in Europe, <laughs> in uh, cities that uh, are a little bit older than uh, some other cities. And um, I, for instance, this um, a lion. Yeah, a lion is not actually, he, he, lions do not exist here in Europe. Yeah. Yeah. But you will see the symbol of a lion scattered all around, especially if a city has an older colonel. So, and that this lion, of course, that is also a pharaonic symbol, but it has been also the banner of the Anunnaki. One and of the banners. The official British seal of the royal mm -hmm. family is a lion and a unicorn mm -hmm. holding up the shield of the royal family. And the lion and the unicorn were also symbols of Israel. They are the sort of the, the symbols of Israel. And you can see the connection. There's some, there's some connections to be made by watching this documentary and investigating for yourself. But there are many, many, many things people can see. You're right. The line does not exist in uh, Northern Europe. It's everywhere. And it's sort of an African animal. And, or Middle Eastern. I mean, it's not even a Middle Eastern animal. It's it's an African animal, mm -hmm. and you can see. So why why is it also a uh, the symbol of Israel? And even the word Israel, if a lot of people will theorize, it means ISIS. So is I S ISIS, Ra, L. and L, mm -hmm. and so you have the. L can stand for a god. It can also stand for electricity or power. So Isis Ra L could very well just mean the power of Isis and Ra. Ra is the sun god, where you know where a lot of the power comes from. I mean, the human farmers consider us solar panels to which they can harness our electricity that we that we gather as so solar panels. But the interesting thing I'm trying to connect there is Isis is a female. Mm -hmm. And again, so you see there's a there's a dedication in both lines, the Hebrew line, the Egyptian line, the third line, the UK royal line, is there's a slight lean over genetically that it's the female that's the most important. And you could even categorize the whole battle today between a battle between a man and a woman looking mm -hmm. for jockeying position for the throne because you have females um you know really catapulted up the social status and power status and then all of a sudden here comes a man dressed as a woman and then the women are fighting back and then someone's like i don't want to be a woman i want to take a surgery and become a man mm -hmm. and you can see there's all this 
weird undercurrent. And I will let you know, weird to us, but the Egyptians worked in energy magic. They know that we're just sort of vessels or meat suits that carry certain frequencies of energy. And some of these frequencies of energy are adversarial. Mm -hmm. And they know it can play out in various different ways. So if you'd like me to continue, I can continue on. But if you have any other comments, you can definitely go. Because this is the first interview I've ever given like this, ever. I'm sorry for torturing you. <laughs> no, it's perfectly fine because there's a lot more interesting things coming up. Uh -huh. Definitely. Okay. Yeah. Just just one remark today. Um, I read an article where a trans woman. Um, it was on TikTok, and um, he he said that he wants to have. Um, ovaries and a uterus um, installed via surgery yeah, so sorry. that he can be the first trans woman to have an abortion. Yes. And I'll, I'll, I mean, this is not sane. Mm -hmm. But again, if we go back to where the raising of the dead idea is what you're seeing there. So what that person is embodying, we've dealt with in the past. We, as living beings, have looked over at ideas and we give all ideas at their fair shake. Oh, this might be good, this might be bad. But there are ideas we've dealt with in, in the past that we've actually done away with and killed them. Not the people, the ideas. Mm -hmm. So anything that brings death and misery and pain as living beings, we're supposed to identify them and say, you know what, like you're in the minority, we don't like this idea and we're really not going to let it pro proliferate. The Egyptians would be like, hold on a second, I have a way around this. And they know how to channel energy to death-based ideas to make them rise up. And I'll, I'll explain how they do that at the end of this talk. So what you're seeing there is what's called a death-centric idea. And I will tell you without a doubt that the Egyptians were more death-centric than any other culture before them. They were obsessed with death. They wanted to live after death. They did not want to die. They wanted to continue the partying and the ruling of the slaves down here. They did not want to go. And in that way, a lot of people said, well, you're anti-God. You're anti the real God because God mm -hmm. will recycle everything. And you, by you not wanting to die, you're sort of not with God. You're against God. And that's where a lot of people started putting these labels on the Egyptians. Some, um, you know, some were accurate and some maybe not so accurate. But the fact is when you want to bypass the natural cycle set up by in the living realm, you know, or hack the tree of life so that you, you know, that, that every other regular cycle is for the slaves and the dumb people. And we're going to, you know, try and bypass it. A lot of people are like, hey, you know what, you're not allowed to do that. You're going to screw up the whole cycle, you know, the whole organism down here on Gaia. So let's go, let's just move on. I'll just go, go through these connections a little bit. Because mm -hmm. again, on the day after September 10th, the only the three tallest buildings standing were they were Egyptian. Two were Egyptian. One we would believe is Hebrew, but the UK Royals have a lot of Hebrew connection, and they also have a lot of Egyptian pharaonic connections. Um, so anyway, Jacob was a patriarchal figure in Israel. Jacob had 12 sons, and that they would in canon, the Canaanite priests of old will always wear the chest plate with the 12 tribes of Jacob. Because he had 12 sons and each son went on to head one of the tribes. Well, the queen has the same color, similar gems around her, you know, her corona. And these people, you know, that's why they call it the coronation or the crown. These are all indications of the sun. Now they believe they're the sun gods. 
the mm -hmm. pharaonic, you know, they believe they're representatives of the sun, representatives of the energy. Uh, the 12 stones on the crown, we know that. Now, the odd thing too, Judith, is that these high priests in canon, the Canaanite priests, they were known, and again, this does not mark an ancient culture as bad, right? It, just like Justin Trudeau does not represent all the Canadians. Just because he's mentally defective doesn't mean we're all mentally defective. But the high priests in the Canaanite culture would be in charge of sacrifice to a god called Molish or Molech, mm -hmm. where they would burn children alive. And I've done a whole, I will send you, if you can maybe write on your notes that I'll send you the child sacrifice article. So people mm -hmm. could know that we're dealing with, if these connections are true, and it's up for everybody to find, you know, investigate this for themselves. If these connections are true, and even one sliver, one tenth of one percent of this child sacrifice vein of energy is still alive within this uh, group, I want people to know that they're they're dealing with an ultimate form of evil. And the reason the pharaohs have been hypothesized not to be in Egypt is because they were so obsessed with this death and the sacrifice. They would set up shop and they go from Egypt up in the Middle East and people, they'd set up shop and they always put their best face on. And then eventually they're sacrificing kids and doing all kinds of weird stuff. And they're like, you got to go. So they run up to they run up to Greece, and then they run over to Italy, then they run up to Germany, and then they went to the U, you know, they went to United Kingdom. And basically, the only reason they've stopped there is because of the ocean. And they had to change their name and their costume. Because again, if you go back to their primary characteristic, you know, you have Jacob meaning the one who sees his absurps and circumvents. So the Union Jack, a lot of people don't know that Jack is Jacob. It's the uniting of the 12 tribes of Jacob. Mm -hmm. This is what this is what the United Jack, you know, the Union Jack is, is meant. And of course, the Union Jack is red, white, and blue. And if you just put in any search engine the three crowns of Egypt, they are red, white, and blue. The blue is for when they went to war. I think the red was the northern king and the white was the southern king, but there's only three crowns of Egypt and they are red, white, and blue. And the average person doesn't understand either that, the, you know, the barber pole outside a barber shop, what color, what colors are those? They are red, white, and blue. And they were the ancient doctors of the time. And we're having a lot of problems with doctors, aren't we? And these doctors, this was not the place where you got your hair cut. This is where they, you know, amputated limbs, did bloodletting, did the surgeries of the day. This, these were the doctor's area. And it was the Egyptians and the pharaohs, and I'll come back full circle right now to tell you about there are two primary modes of controlling the slave class, poison and mind control. These groups were mind control experts. And mind control, and I, this is now you're in my wheelhouse, what I do for a living. Mind control is based, 85% of mind control is based on repetition. This is what the media is for. The subconscious is something that's in every human. It comes as standard equipment and it is there to make you safe. It's process by which it makes you safe is it counts repetition, assuming that the most repetitive content in your environment represents what the bigger herd is saying, thinking, or doing. Your subconscious will force you, force you outside your conscious awareness. Just like your, your body right now is forcing your heart to beat, you're not involved. It will force you to live out, mimic, copy, and emulate the most repetitive content of your environment. The Egyptians knew this. They also knew that if you told people lies on a repetitive basis, they'd believe those lies eventually because of the way the subconscious works. 
But they also found out, look, if I lie to them on this repetitive basis, which we'll establish as the foundation of our mind control, if we poison them or make them weak on any other part, any other level, like bloodletting, they actually buy into the bullshit even more. So this is their one-two punch. And this is what the barber shops were originally for is to weaken the public through the bloodletting. This is what bloodletting was for. The propensity for someone to go along with a lie, which is why anybody would mind control another person, is based on the internal strength of that person. Poisons, bloodletting, and even getting the person to participate in the lie when they're not really into it, forces them down spiritually. Again, these are energy experts. You will see no physical change in that person. You will have a spiritual change of weakness. And the weak person believes the lies more. And if you look out the window today, we're seeing we're having some issues with doctors. They're doing things to make us weak. Mind control, brainwashing, propaganda, and behavior modification are hitting very, very dangerous high notes. And I've linked the original pharaonic propaganda and poisoning methods to exactly what's happening today. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we can, it's the same way to rule, control, manipulate, steal from, and lie to humans, get them weak, keep them poisoned, and drown them in a tsunami of lies to the point where they have no strength because they have no footing, they have no cultural strength. Everything's watered down. They don't know up from down, black from white, right from wrong. They have no morality. These are weak people and they will do exactly what you're told. Yeah. So you can see this sort of thing is in play today. In the British coat of arms, we've already went over. It's a harp on the British coat of arms. We have a harp, which is the a sign of King David. This is a symbol from the Hebrew annals of Hebrew history. The harp is a symbol of King David. The lion and the unicorn, they are uh, universally accepted symbols of Israel. So why are they on the sort of, the, you know, sort of the British coat of arms? And there was a song that was sung in the Queen's coronation in 1952. Uh, the song was Zadok the priest. And Zadok anointed King Solomon in ancient history to become the king. And during the sort of the anointment of King Solomon in ancient history, Zadok the priest said, God save King Solomon, long live King Solomon, may King Solomon live forever. In 1952, that's when they entered this, uh, God save the queen, long live the queen, may the queen live forever. It's the exact same coronation sort of symbol of what was done to King Solomon. So you can see there's some pieces here in the puzzle. And... On the bottom of the British coat of arms, or it's sort of the royal seal, they have a motto in Latin called God and my right. Now, here's where it gets a little, this is where people, when they don't know information and you give them new information, the more shocking it is, the more they can reject it. And I know that, but I'm going to put this out anyway, because this symbology of the dog God is dog spelled backwards. Yeah. Now, in the Egyptian pyramids, I don't know if it's the, the Giza pyramid or the Great Pyramid, but the burial shaft where the spirit's going to be going, the it, the back to the, it goes to the dog star Sirius. Now, the biggest coup that could ever be done. Now, this group openly... That's why they call it the dog days of summer, because the dog days of summer means when Sirius is the highest. In Egypt, they call, it's usually the hottest. Now, where this group used to go, and people used to watch for this cult a lot in history. As soon as they saw them sacrificing children, they're like, you got to go. You got to keep migrating 
through this town. You guys are way too crazy for us. And they would also be sort of honoring their god of death, which is Anubis, which is a jackal, which is a dog. Again, jackal. There we go again. Union Jack, jackal. The, you can connect this stuff all the time. And so when they would see the dog being honored in ancient history, they're like, ah, oh, you know, and this cult used to burn children alive inside these metal statues of a bull called Molesh. So this is where the word bullshitter usually comes from or uh, bullshit. Uh, this, this bull cult of Molesh, which was the main deity in the Canaanite religion. And I don't know what I was really talking about there, but this bull cult, they would wreck, if they put up or erected this bull statue that burned kids alive, they're like, you got to go. Or they would honor this jackal, this dog deity, they would say, you got to go. And can you imagine such a fear of this cult? And this cult disguising itself was, we're just going to turn things around. We're just going to have this God. But it's really that, you know, it's going to be dog spelled backwards. We sort of get our way in, in a sort of less obvious exposure of what's really going on. here. So a lot of, the, and even like Sirius Radio. So Sirius Radio is a uh, radio station and it had Howard Stern and he's responsible for a so much moral decay inside uh, the United States and the world. He He's everybody... This is the inversion, the giving life to things that should have been dead. Uh, not that Howard Stern should be dead, but his immoral rants and unethical and just the degradation of the moral foundation of the United States by Howard. And he happens to be on a radio station called Sirius. And what's the symbol for Sirius? It is a symbol of a what? It's a symbol of a dog. And mm -hmm. the dog has a star for his eye. That's the symbol for Sirius. So there's all these weird Egyptian, Hebrew, Pharaonic, UK royal connections. And if you haven't noticed who we're in trouble with today, I mean, it was King Charles that pressed down this big glow button to trigger the countdown to 2030. And it was the ancient Egyptian pharaohs who originally, not anybody else, the, the, the pharaohs, and they're, you know, sort of they were infiltrated a little bit. And you can read about or watch about who infiltrated the pharaohs to sort of take them over. It was them who dreamed of the one world government. That's, that's their dream. Their dream is the one world government to one ring to rule them all. And as the saying goes, I mean, a pretty creepy saying, one ring to rule them all, one ring to find them, one ring to bring them all, and in the darkness of their ignorance, bind them, which is exactly what's going on today. People are so ignorant. They're so addicted to pleasure. Uh, I mean, this is what what happened from 2020 Ford was all about is said, you're going to do what we say, or you don't get your pleasures. You don't get to go to the movies. You don't get to travel. You don't get to go out to the ball game. And in their ignorance, you will bind them. Mm. Because if you're going to trade in freedom for a ball game, you're ignorant. And they've made us addicted to pleasure, which it was another sort of aspect of human farming originated by the pharaonic line is this is guess who invented beer who invented beer go look the it egyptians. up the egyptians and even the phrase rock and roll the average person like i think it's post malone has a song something something rock star a rock uh, rock and roll old time rock and roll by bob seger um rolling stone magazine the original rock and rollers were the Egyptian slaves that would rock and quarry, quarry the rock, and they would have to roll the rock on timbers to get to the monument site. And the average person today, the, I'm going to a rock concert, old time rock and roll, rock and roll. And they'll put it up like this, rock and roll. That's the bull cult of Molesh that burn kids alive. And what you're really saying with any indication to rock and roll, and that's why if you're a writer of songs in this industry, 
write about rock and roll because the people who rule us know what that means and they know it mocks you on a spiritual level and makes you weak and they want you at the rock concert because you're the you're a rock star you're entertaining the slaves as the egyptians are building their control grid around you so yeah there is there are definitely a lot of weird connections you can comment yourself right now and then i'll i'll continue on once you're finished yeah i just wanted to briefly uh share my um a screen because you know sometimes uh, people think that they um we have oh, my goodness let me get this uh, out of the way so here we go sometimes people think yeah but uh, the united states uh, royalty that is all over yeah here we go um the 44th U.S. President Barack Obama, ancestor, King Edward I, King Henry III, and here it goes, uh, Gilbert de Clare, whoops, and here we have King Louis VI of France, William the Conqueror, Charlemagne, they all Alfred go back the to Great. Charlemagne. Yeah. And on and on it goes. And by the way, Charlemagne is, uh, you find him in uh, all of the U.S. presidents. And the only one where I couldn't find a royal connection was Biden. Yeah, uh, but yeah, the it could be Biden. There was, um, I think, Wilson. Um, I don't remember the president's first name, Wilson in the United States, I believe somewhere in the 50s. Yes, every president was traced back to King Charlemagne. Yeah, and here we and, have Donald Trump. Um, here is his uh, bloodline from uh, no uh, Norway. Yeah. Yeah, and of course... He has also, yeah, it's also Norway, and we have an Icelandic um, bloodline. So thinking that we have escaped that system of control and rule because the United States um, has presidents, has no longer kings, and has no royalty, and... Um, what I also found interesting, I found this today. This is a PLAS, a Ukrainian scouting organization in Great Britain. And see what they have interlaced here, the fleur de lis. Mm -hmm. And here we have the trident. Yeah. That is sort of, you could say, a modernized form of the fleur de lis. And even with the fleur de lis, Usually people say, yeah, it's a sign of royalty, nobility, blah, blah, blah. But at the end of the day, it is the Babylonian trinity of Nimrod, Semiramis, and uh, Tammuz. They also like the, the fleur de lis because sometimes it will be used to um, indicate the royal blue Nile lily, which was yeah. a hallucinogen which they would hand out um, during ceremony, uh, public ceremony to make the brain function more open for mind control regarding the document of mind control. They would fire at the public through the ceremony. So even back then, they knew that, yeah, mind control works on X amount of people, but if you can get them drunk on beer, entertain them, if you, you know, gave them some... Uh, drugs, et cetera, et cetera. Well, uh, you're going to increase the mind control of that population tenfold. Mm -hmm. So they knew, again, that they're, they're two weapon, one, two punch, poison and mind control. And it doesn't matter if you go to Teflon pans, the birth control pill, pesticide sprayed on the foods that we're eating, all, you know, back to the barber shop, what the doctors were having trouble with, because what they're mostly handing out and what people are starting to realize 
is that they're not handing out things that aren't toxic. And every additional toxic level we go up as a human being, we lose our brain function in what's called the prefrontal cortex, which is uh, the care and control center of the mind, the, the strength area. And if we lose function of this part of the brain because we're toxic or weak or we're attacked or confused or bamboozled, they can have their way with us. And they've passed down this very simple knowledge over it originated in you know the ancient Middle East and passed it down to their ruling families. Even if you go back to that article you just put, Judith, Charlemagne, King of the Franks, as soon as you see Frankish or someone related to you know this cult, this Frankish cult, this is the same cult we're dealing with today. The frame, mm -hmm. everything's got to be inverted. Everything's got to be out, upside down. Women have to dress as men. Men have to dress as women. And they, they just like rocking the stability because they want to rock the stability because they started it and they're going to decide when it stops. Is it going to stop here, here, or here? Because they started it, they'll stop it whenever it benefits them. And this is what this group was famous for, cause conflict, cause societal upheaval, cause confusion and then when when everybody's so tired of it and so exhausted and so weakened you say it'll stop if you just get in that camp that 15 minute camp and hear your crickets and then it will all stop in this one world concept again brainchild of the ancient pharaonic lines they wanted to rule the entire world they they have this belief that they were sent here to rule the world, to have themselves and everybody else as them as their slaves. Let me just go on a little bit, some other interesting pieces of the puzzle that we're gonna throw on the floor here. Anybody can start trying to put this puzzle together. I'm not a puzzle expert. I just know we gotta keep an eye on these symbols because when they show their face, it's not good. These, this group doesn't have one good bone in their body. So when they're involved in anything, even symbolically, like you can see they're all, every president in the United States is linked to that, that one king. And according to Grace Powers, all these kings are ancient pharaohs. And then these pharaohs are very bad people. Not mm -hmm. all of them, but there's a certain sect of them, these priests. So in Scotland, there is a castle called Balmoral. Mm -hmm. It is owned by the royal family. And there's a massive pyramid right on the property. Perfectly uh, made. Not one stone out of place. And Balmoral, Bal is a, a, a call out, a secondary name for Molech. So Baal or Baal, B-A-A-L or B-A-L, some people called him Bill or William. And we have many Williams in that line of the royal line. But Baal is the ancient, what we would know as the devil, Satan, or Molech, the, the, the deity that we would sacrifice children to if we were in the ancient Canaanite religion. This, and then Baal moral can mean A-L, when you see A-L in the English language, like A-L-L, all, it usually refers to God. So Baal, more meaning extra, and Al meaning God, you can see they're, they're probably not honoring the God that we have been, have been taught. Mm -hmm. And why is an ancient Egyptian pyramid shape? It's not a it's not a super old pyramid, but the fact it's on their property. He's wearing a kilt. You have all these other, you know, connections, all these other evidence. And again, when the towers fell on that fateful day after September the 10th, it's replaced by basically a glass building with several pyramids, every facet whether it's an upside down pyramid or a right way up pyramid, it's all facets of a pyramid that also happens to look like a needle, mm -hmm. right? And the word needle means need. If you were to pronounce needle 
in the classical way we're taught in school, it should be pronounced need leave mm -hmm. because it's an L E and we're supposed to pronounce that like an L Y like L E. If it was really needle, it would be need E L need O. And we, this is what the, another thing the pharaonic lines were famous for is basically word magic where you confuse their mind by making them pronounce words differently or you give the same word different meanings like pitcher, like a baseball pitcher, a pitcher on a wall, and then a pitcher to hold water. They do that. This is all done on purpose. This is all done to convolute the mind and make it more obedient because that doesn't make any sense. And if you follow along with things that don't make sense, this ancient group proved that it lowers your resistance to, to command because you're complying in something that makes no logical sense. In New York City, there is something called Cleopatra's Needle. Mm -hmm. It is a real live Egyptian obelisk took, taken from Egypt and brought to New York City. And there was two of them. There's two, the second pair, where's the second pair? Where's the second part of Cleopatra's Needle? It's in London. It's in London. Now, these were believed to represent the penis of the bull god Molesh, which is piercing the sky. They'd engrave certain things, certain symbols in them. And they know that everything in life vibrates out. Everything vibrates. So those obelisks have ancient spell castings on them. That's why they call spelling or cursive, setting a curse. And they vibrate out into the air, just like my phone over here is vibrating out into the air, transmitting a signal. I don't even know what's going on with that signal right now. And so Cleopatra's Needle, if you line up Cleopatra's Needle that's in Central Park in New York with the angle that it lines up with, with the Statue of Liberty, and the Statue of Liberty is not what people think it is. It's not a symbol. It's a symbol of the light or Lucifer, which is a Freemasonic symbol. I tried to find the third object that it lines up with. I wrote about it. I couldn't find the article. But there's three Egyptian, there's three objects, ancient objects that line up in New York City. Cleopatra's Needle, the Statue of Liberty, I can't remember the third, but if you line up the exact angles, it's the exact angle of the belt of Orion, which is the exact angle that the three, you know, the pyramids in Giza are lined up at. It's the exact angle of the belt of Orion, and it's the Sirius star cluster that lives inside the belt of Orion. Mm. And not many people are aware of all this aroma of Egyptians and the Metropolitan Museum is where you can go and honor these ancient gods. You can yeah, go. I and went like, there many times. I I found that uh, Egyptology uh, section quite fascinating. Mm. Right, and so why is it there, and why it's like a permanent display now? Like everything's there. You can go see. I mean, I went there and saw King Tut's golden sarcophagus. Mm. I mean, I, I don't know how many tons it was. Pure gold. And who else likes gold, right? The queen has a carriage of pure gold. It's pure gold. The value is in the billions of dollars. And she rolls down the street and, the, you know, gold conducts electricity. We won't even talk about that. Now, in Washington, there is something called the Washington Monument, which is a what, Judith? You know, it's an obelisk, right? And it is 555 feet tall, 55, uh, five inches. And it is lined up with the Pentagon. Now the Pentagon is a five-sided figure. That Pentagon is five stories tall. It has five inner rings and there's an inner courtyard that's five acres. Guess when the Pentagon, the first shovel, we already talked about the first shovel ceremony for the Pentagon was on the big day after September 10th, but this was in the 1960s. The Egyptian New Year. Why is the Pentagon being founded on the Egyptian New Year? Why are the buildings 
on that big day taken down on the Egyptian New Year. Now, the symbol and hieroglyphics for the star Sirius is a star, an obelisk, and an oval. That represents the star Sirius. And right in the line in Washington, you have the Washington Mon Monument, it's an obelisk. Then you have the Pentagon, and then you have the Oval Office representing the star Sirius. And the reason the Egyptians were obsessed with five, that's why the Washington Monument is 555 feet and five inches. The Pentagon is a five-sided object. It has, like I said, it's five stories, five rings to the Pentagon, inner courtyards, five acres. The Egyptians are the ones who denoted the four, the four elements, earth, air, fire, and water. They realized these things are useless without the fifth element. The fifth element is what they call the invisible, ether, the yeah. electricity, or what they would call the magic. Without the fifth element, there can be no life, and it's invisible. So what brings the tides in and out? They could see the tides moving. They're like, what's uh, moving this? You couldn't see it, but you knew it was happening. That's the fifth element. An invisible force that acts on physical reality that you can't see, although you see the results of it. The migration of the butterflies, the migration of the salmon, the migration of the ducks and the and the geese. What holds the moon up in the sky? They're like, it's up there. I don't know what it is, but it's there. And I can't see what's holding it up. They're like, that's the fifth element. And they became obsessed. Now they would basically represent the fifth element as the five pointed star. And there was white ether or white magic where you would do good and use the invisible force to your advantage. And if you wanted to do bad things, then you would use the invisible force for evil. And you would represent the white magic as the star pointing up. And you would represent the dark magic by the star pointed down or what they sometimes call a pentacle or a pentagram. And they would do these ceremonies. And even Hillary Clinton, when she was campaigning for president, you can look this up on Google yourself. She was traveling with a flag. Look, and again, red, white, and blue. Isn't that funny? All full of stars. Isn't that funny? Egyptian, 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 Egyptian. Her stars were upside down. And she got to about the fifth city on her tour. Someone decided to say something. Mrs. Clinton, don't you know that all the stars on your American flag are pointed down, which indicates black magic? Oh, I wasn't aware, she said. And then the next day she had the proper flag up. There is something going on here. And this is why the five, you'll see this, this is why they love the stars. Everybody's got a star T-shirt. The you know the Dallas Cowboys has got the star. This is a primary ancient symbol for magic or electricity. And the Egyptians were masters of modifying invisible forces to get their way. Like when I put out something, like when when the media puts out something aggravating, like this group is attacking your kids in the school and doing this to your kids at the school and teaching your kids this at the school, telling your kids to go on these medications and go on these surgeries, you rise this, oh, where did the anger come from? Is it the fifth element? You bet it's the fifth element because you can see the change in the people but you can't see why they changed. So all this manipulation that we're under now, this group versus that group, and you know all these things that don't make sense and the confusion in the person and the changes in the markets and everything that they're doing, 
is basically old magic where they're going to do something physical in the real world and cause an etheric, what's called an etheric or electrical or invisible reaction inside the public. And if the public's poisoned, you get an amplification of that. And that's why 555 feet and five inches, and there's many fives in the Pentagon, they considered that any spell or any object or any ceremony that used a five, that could cast a certain amount of magic, like a star. But like if you a were, to, yeah, like a pentagram. But if you could get several fives involved, they call it magical amplification. So that's why, I say, James Cor, I think his name's James Corden or James Corbin. He was a, a late night. TV show host in the United States, very good voice. And he paired with another star in a song about going to get your medicine. The second star, her name is Ariana Grande. And then there was another star and another Jimmy Fallon, another star and another star. That's spell casting. That's amplification <laughs> because people, you know, that's why Elton John came out and said, get your medicine. And that's why Dolly Parton came out and said it. Bon Jovi came out and said it. Arnold Schwarzenegger said, screw your freedom. Mm. Right. Gene, Gene Simmons said anybody that shouldn't have, uh, didn't get their medicine should be jailed. Mm -hmm. Why do you think they give them stars of fame, the walk of fame with the stars? Because we're designed and programmed to follow the stars, follow the magic. And when we get several stars telling us to do one thing or another, or we see a show with three of our four stars, like we can't believe it the, that uh, Thor, uh, Chris Hemsworth is in the same movie with this star. And then that star, look at all the stars. And you see the person get so excited. That's mm -hmm. the fifth element. That's the power. That's what they call the star power, the invisible power to move the slave class in one direction or the other. So again, pieces of the puzzle here thrown out on the floor. Um, we know this, even Scotland, people don't know. We in, in Canada and in the US now, we have the Bank of Nova Scotia. We have the province Nova Scotia. How many people know that Scotland, anything with Scotia in it, or it is named after an Egyptian pharaoh's daughter that mm -hmm. died. Her name was Skoda, and she yeah. died in Scotland, and her grave is still there to this, to this day. I'm not too sure what structure it is. I don't think it's a pyramid. How does an Egyptian pharaoh's daughter get buried in Scotland and the whole island get in? It's not island. Is it an island? No, I'm showing my ignorance here. No, it's, 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 it's connected. not an island. Yeah, it's connected. That's Ireland. Ireland. I'm thinking, is I'm thinking island. Ireland. <laughs> So yeah, how does a whole region be uh, connected to the U you know the UK area? How does that whole region become named after a pharaoh's daughter? Please, people, there's enough evidence here to choke a rhino. That not what I'm saying is completely true, but for you to say I'm going to start looking because this doesn't make any sense, and I kid you not that if half of this is true. We're dealing with a cult that is steeped in child sacrifice, steeped in two primary ways to control the slave class, poisoning and mind control. And we're, that's all we've been drowning in for the past three years. And the people that this new world order concept, it is pharaonic by its very design. And now they're out in the open. We need a new world order. And they're coming right out and saying it. I'll yeah, say the, one more the thing. The new world order is the old world order. It's Play the it. old world order. Yeah, with kings and queens and everybody else has none. And again, raising of the dead. Now that we talk, I'm going to go skip to this one and leave this little small part for last so that we can have time here. The raising of the dead concept, please pay attention, this is not hard. 
Judith and me and everybody else having nothing and the pharaohs and kings and queens of old having everything and raping and beating the shit out of us whenever they want. We've tried that. Now, we've tried that 100%. We've tried. We don't like it. We put that, we gave that final ceremony long time ago. Even though it erupts different places around the world, we as a people know this idea can't be allowed to walk in our realm. This is the realm of the living. This is an idea that needs to pass. We cannot let it crawl out of the grave and walk amongst us freely. We cannot do that. We cannot let these ideas that the most well-paid person in our town cannot be someone who wears a white butcher coat and poisons us. This is an idea that needs to pass away. So how is it that there's a person in all our towns that wears a white butcher coat that is the best at putting us back together after a car accident, but is not good at chronic illness because all they work with is what's called pharmakia, which means is ancient Greek for poison. How is it that that person in a free market, completely free, which the you know this realm of the living is supposed to be operated on. Who is going to go interact with this person financially? And the person says, "Hey, look, um, I'm going to poison you, and you're going to get better." It's, um, it's an idea. Let's try it, but it doesn't work. So how is it that say that one idea and a million more I could talk about? are artificially supported. Like in our society, if a doctor enters a room, someone who really, no offense to anybody who's not this far down the rabbit hole or this far away, this person is not worthy of our respect based on title alone. No. You, have to, you have to participate in a positive way in our society. And... I'm not too sure if the doctors out there can comprehend that you can't make people healthy in the way you're being doing. And it's not just me. It was me 20 years ago, but there's probably 2 billion people now who know this. So how is it that that person walks into a social event still to this day and everybody's like, that's Dr. Frank, that's Dr. Jim. And how is it that he gets three, four, five hundred, eight hundred million dollars a year? How is it that any of these ideas that bring death, these are all death centric ideas, they're not supposed to walk in the realm of the living because all they bring is what they bring. They bring us death. Everything that's getting pushed on us today, oh, you're not going to have enough food to eat? Or like, that's an idea we've tried we're not supposed to accept it it's not supposed to walk out of the grave and get right out of the cemetery and walk by us unchallenged so how are they doing this how are they resuscitating dead ideas to come out of the ground ideas we killed a long time ago money and the ancient egyptians knew something about money that they don't teach us that it's electricity, it's units of electricity. And in any, any Frankenstein movie, you go watch any Frankenstein movie, and it's a metaphorical representation of what the Egyptians know. Put a dead thing on the table, raise it up to the roof where all the electricity, all the lightning is, all the electrical conductivity and the electricity flying back between the orbs. Put the dead thing in there, lower it down. And voila, you can bring the dead thing back to life. So what's happening today is that they have harnessed us as solar energy collectors, slaves. They've taken our labor, which we used to plow into our own fields, plow into our own food, plow into our own communities, and then they started to monetize it. They said, 
I'm going to put a monetary amount on all this and make us interchange our value, exchange our value with each other, with money. And then they said, that's the first thing. Let them keep all their value. Let them keep their energy. Let them keep their electricity, their work value. And then they knew that they're waiting for us to get accustomed to that. Then they're going to say, out of your 100 coins, I'm going to take two. Then I'm going to take three. Then I'm going to take four. You think it's money. They know it's electricity, and they're going to raise the dead with it. The word money, the average person doesn't know. Mun, or M-O-N, means the moon. Mm -hmm. And the moon means the one and only, the lonely one. There's only one moon. When you see M-O-N, it means one. Mun E. What letter of the alphabet is E, Judith? Five. The fifth element, Mm -hmm. the electricity, the, the ether, the magical energy. So they're not stealing money from you. They're stealing electricity. And they're putting all these concepts, these death-centric concepts. We're going to cut off this person's penis. We're going to cut off this person's breast. We're going to pollute in this way. We're going to spray poisons on the food. And they're just paying people with our money, our electricity. They're funneling. They have all our electricity in a ball. And they're literally it's crackling and lightning and they're raising all these dead ideas into the electricity to raise this stuff from the dead now their final coup de gras is they need all our electricity and there's only one way to get all someone's electricity they want it all is to completely invert life So that for these things to walk above ground, it's an energy exchange. There's one way to do it. For the dead to walk above ground, the living have to go six feet under. Mm. Your your energy has to be captured wholly and fully and 100%. This is why they're trying to get everybody and say, oh, you can't afford the house. We'll take the house from you. We'll take the gold and silver. We're going to take everything. You'll own nothing and be happy. Because then they get the other electrical conductivity, lightning, electricity, ether that they need to bring the dead back to life. Things that will only destroy the entire planet. And that's what this pharaonic line is known for. They're inverted. They hate life. They don't like the design of life. And the reason they don't like the design of life is because they sort of have a childish genetic line to them. They don't want to die. And because they do die, they're like, we're going we're gonna to just wipe the whole thing down to the dust because this, this is how much we loathe this cycle. B- these are bad people. And we really have to start understanding the connection between the pharaohs, certain groups in the Hebrew area, not all of them, some of them, and they have names and addresses, you don't even have to call them by their their ethnic identity or their religious identity. Just name them who they are. There's some people in that area. And then, of course, the UK royals. And then all their related relatives and all the royal positions around the EU and even the US presidency, as you've shown, they're all related, mostly related, except two right now, throughout American history. They're all related to the king line. And king... King, and we'll just we'll just keep going here. King means kin, kin, K-I-N, meaning related to G. And if you want to know who the G are, the Freemason, the Gaon, which was an ancient class of Egyptian priests from the cult of Aton, they're also uh, Hebrew scholars, which again should not surprise anybody giving our talk. And this is why the G is the central letter in the Freemasonic symbol, the, the, the compass and square with the G in it, the Gionum, and if you want more information on this, you go to Michael Tessarian's uh, work on Unslaved, his Unslaved podcast with David Whitehead, so you can learn about the Gionum, the proper history of them. But they were ancient priests, Egyptian priests from the cult of Aton, and their specialty was poisoning and mind control. 
And that's what the G is for. And so again, king means kin of the Gaonum, related to the Gaonum, related to the ancient Egyptian priests, and they're all related. And I don't know what they say, taking the piss. I don't even know what that means. I've been hearing that a lot out of the UK lately, but they're they're just kicking the crap out of us with their old, old tactics. They're all connected. They're all speaking behind our backs. The, the flags mean nothing. The borders mean nothing. The borders mean something to soldiers. Yeah. Because this group, the, Fer the Pharaonic kings would lose many times. They And they would write down, oh, I lost that battle, lost that battle. Well, what's the common denominator in the battles they lose? It's the, it's the men. Strong men would always win. And that's why they would have the fake countries. That's why if you go down in that list of Obama, you see him related to the King of England one time. And then he's also related to the King of France. Because the French King and the UK King would phone each other, courier each other and say, we're going to have a war. And the, both kings would agree. You send your strongest men, I'll st send my strongest men, and we'll just keep watering down the men over time. So that if you haven't noticed, the men today, it's a fine maple syrup, a thick maple syrup of feminine, short, weak, unmotivated men who mm -hmm. just want to, you know, smoke marijuana, play video games and masturbate. <laughs> this has taken a long time to get them to this point. So the, what I'm trying to say, I mean, we don't have to go on. I got a couple other crazy points, but start paying attention the, nothing is what it seems. And this group is old. And they use the, if you want to know, this group used the same tactics all the time throughout the millennial millennium. You don't have to be really too bright to figure it out. If something's getting poisoned, they're behind it. And media is owned by them. And don't forget the two were the first two phonetic words of media and even medical is me die. They put that on purpose because it registers in your head. Like diagnosis, diabetes. The first word there is die. Even the word soldier. So soul, dire. Di soul dire means death of the soul, death of the sun, or death of the light. They use this word magic because they've tested it. And even if you say the word, it, in you're hooked up electronically to a sort of a, a strength a device analyzing device your strength goes down your electrical field goes down and then if you participate in it like if you read it and you you don't you might consciously not pick it up but soldier means death of the soul and then you sign up you're even weaker and they need you really weak before you go in because any war that they're you're they're going to ask you to fight is either a fake war to reduce the male population and make them wealthy in one way or another, or it's a real invasion of another country that said no to the pharaohs a long time ago. They're like, we don't want to participate in your bullshit, your bull cult, your cult of molesh, your cult of sacrifice. And then soldiers would be asked to go invade them. They take over the banks and take over the leadership. Those are the only two kinds of wars, wars to reduce men or wars to take over countries. So that country can be the next fake country in a fake war. We really got to start putting these things together because they had a dream of full world domination a long time ago. And it's really like getting 10 minutes to midnight with their goals. And I'll tell you one thing. Don't despair because they use psychological manipulation because they don't have the force or power to do to us what they want. They have to psychologically trick us for us to do it to ourselves. Mm -hmm. So the minute you wake up and stop ingesting or injecting poison and you turn off the media, they lose their power. They get weak. You, you get stronger, like you pop up. You pop up as a stronger individual, eat healthy food, get in the sun. The sun's not bad for you. And no. <laughs> any you you reinflate, and as you reinflate, they deflate. So I want people to know that. Yeah. I a couple of days ago I interviewed Howdy Mikoski. Did you hear of him? No. 
Well, anyway, during the interview, he said, because we live in very crazy times. And he said that one of the most important things that you can do during this time is staying sane yeah. and make sure that you stay sane, that you do not at one point fall for the nonsense and the propaganda. And that's my whole mission, what I teach to my students at my, like I have a psychological uh, sort of institute where I teach people to be self-sabotage coaches. The foundation of not going insane is keeping your health and your brain a top function. Mm -hmm. Because a top functioning brain through healthy inputs, water, food, sleep, relaxation, um, exercise, you, you don't need to come see me talk. You don't need to research. You will see what I'm talking about is that there's a death centric pattern. There are people getting paid to bring death to us, our communities, our children, our economy. They are getting paid by our own energy stolen from us in the form of money. They are raising the dead. Mm. And, and people have to see that at least focus on the poison sprayed on food, the chemtrails out of the skies, the, the, these forced instructions that you got to go this for your first, second, third, or fourth edition of this particular medicine, death centric, death centric, death centric, everything's death centric. And the people who know nothing about what's going on, you know, they're getting paid. And they think, oh, wow, I get bonuses for doing this. Or I just got a grant from this foundation to do this. It's death centric. It will come for you. You're next. Your, your wealth is next. They need, my friend was selling his hotel for $5 million. They just gave him $7 million. My friend as well was selling his storage area for three and a half million. They gave him a five and a half. You know why they're overpaying them? Because they intend to take it back because it's electricity and they need it. What they want is your signature on the contract saying that's no longer yours. So mm. once they have your property, they'll be like, Where's your five and a half million? They're like, and you, the guy that got the five and a half million, it's in his house and it's in his bank. And they're like, we're going to just bring that back in. We don't give a shit that we overpaid. It's coming back to us anyway. We just wanted you being unable to generate your own electricity anymore. Now that you're electrically castrated, we're going to steal all your electricity. You can't get out of the bind. And we're going to use your electricity to pay someone else to go imprison you. This is energy magic. This is black magic. Even the word for ancient Egypt was chem. K-H-E-M. And it means black. It means it represented the black sands of Egypt. And if you haven't noticed, chem, chemistry, alchemy even alchemy is in the word in the middle is c-h-e-m this is ancient black magic through the pharaonic lines to the ruling families and i'm not even a, anywhere near educated on this if you want the best education go to the unslaved podcast with david whitehead and michael tessarian to fortify your knowledge about these ancient ruling groups like Jacob, they are masters. They are the deceivers. They're dressing up like royals in their ancient pharaohs. They're dressing up like the world, the, the whiff and the who, and they're not who they say they are. Mm. In general, I mean, I made up my mind a long time ago that there is no such thing as royalty. It's a made-up construct to uh, yeah. keep you a slave and to rule you and to exploit you. What say you? Do you believe that there is really uh, such a thing as royalty? Yeah. And they, they by you, you're sort of, if you believe it, you're giving, they know you're giving an etheric vote. 
So mm -hmm. your energy is not resistant. Which a resistant is a electrical term. Being in power or being in charge are electrical terms. And by you focusing where you, you know, that's why they call it paying attention. What are you paying? Payment means there's an exchange. So when you pay attention to the queen or what you used to, now you pay, pay attention to Charles, you don't understand, but the pharaohs understood there's a etheric exchange where you're getting drained of your energy and it is illegal to turn your back on King Charles or the queen. The monarch, you cannot turn your back on. If you enter the room, you have to look toward their direction, not usually eye contact. And as you back out, you have to back out facing them. That's yeah, it. that is something that I would never do. I would not bow down to anybody. Right. I would not do that whole voodoo. <laughs> it is know? it is voodoo. They're draining yeah. your electricity. So what we need to do as you know, the former slave class is get get educated, get strong, get healthy. And we will attend the next parade or the next jubilee or the next coronation. And we will all set our watches that at 1230, we turn our backs in unison. And oh, you yeah, will see the deflation. If you want to see real energy magic in real time, watch the deflation. They will be stand all of the military will be standing very strong on the street. And so, and they'll be waving and they'll be really erect in their posture. And if everybody on the, on the route, on the sidewalks, on the road, turn around and put their back to them, you will see the posture wilt. And then everybody will get confused because this is the energy magic that the Egyptians know. It's sort of basic, but anything you put your eyes on will drain your uh, energy in that direction. That's why they want the men watching the pornography. There is a literal and physical extraction of real energy, measurable energy coming through the eye of the male watching pornography and into the phone. And they used to call those old scrying mirrors, glass, glass pieces that would extract your energy. So be very careful about what, realm you think you live in because the people who rule you work more in the harry potter lord of the rings realm and you're thinking this is all about technology and they're just hoping you think that because if you start uncovering what's really going on you'll see there's a big energy background to all the things that are going on right now yeah exactly uh thank you how do you so like that show you. judith yeah, thank you so much for doing this. And um, I, as you said, <laughs> the first time that you had to take notes. <laughs> That's the first time. And, you know, if there's going to be a, a, you know, a tinfoil hat award or a full tinfoil bodysuit award that I will ever get, it will be because of this podcast. But you, these are all facts. You can look them up yourself and mm. uh, do what you want with them. Uh, they're puzzle pieces. I didn't connect any. You can start seeing things on your own. It's just knowledge. Just start. There, it's everywhere. You'll start seeing it everywhere if you start looking for it. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, that was it. Night flight for today with the Jason Christoph and the lovely pharaohs that are still molesting us up today. <laughs> we you. see you all next time. Until then, stay safe and sound. Bye-bye.